California's worsening drought conditions and longer wildfire season have now exposed a third element of concern and sometimes life-threatening danger. It's housing, specifically the push to build housing in high-risk fire zones. New data from UC Berkeley shows nearly 10% of Californians live in high-risk fire zones. And the seven most destructive fires on record have happened in just the last four years. What's more, the cost to replace homes in those high-risk zones could cost at least $610 billion. Joining us to talk about the risk and some of the solutions, director of the UC Berkeley Center for Community Innovation, Professor Karen Chappell. Thanks for joining us. Now, after looking at the Tubbs Fire in Santa Rosa, Camp Fire in Paradise, even the Thomas Fire in Ventura, can you explain how state local housing building policies combined with the fire risk to make the fires just so devastating and lethal? Thank you. Uh, yes, in California, our housing crisis and our climate crisis are on a collision course. And unfortunately, our policies, policies are not helping. Right now, we have an affordable housing crisis, which is pushing people out to the edge of, of our urban areas to find affordable housing. And though we're doing hazard mitigation policies in those areas, but this year, the Governor Newsom's budget calls for $500 billion for home hardening, prescribed burns, and fuel breaks. Uh, this is just the low-hanging fruit. We really need to do good land use planning. We have to stop rebuilding over and over in these same places. And we're going to have to build more affordable housing in safer areas. So ex expand on that a little bit. The plan for rebuilding the housing that's already been lost in those fire zones. The report recommends what that California should do differently and not just rebuild the housing in the same town, same street, same neighborhoods that have burned. That's right. So we recommend that the state take one of two pathways forward. One choice is to do managed retreat. And that means we could build more infill development, we could retreat, we could stop building in the wildland urban interface, and we'd create tremendous co-benefits in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, in terms of reducing home energy costs, and in creating jobs, too. Now, some people don't like that choice because hmm. many communities want to stay. They have, they're attached to their communities. So second choice would be resilience nodes. Um, have dense, walkable communities. Surround those communities with a green buffer. Yeah, the other suggestion we saw is something like that. It's considered, I guess they're considering it right now in paradise. The, the land in these vulnerable areas, they buy it, they turn it into fire breaks. Exactly, how would that work? That's right. Um, the Nature Conservancy and some other organizations are working on designing a broad green buffer around towns like paradise. And that acts as a fire break. Um, it means that you can't have housing in those areas, mm -hmm. so not everybody can come back, but it creates a resilience node, and scientists think it might work to lessen the severity of the fire. So let's do it. And for the folks that need their affordable housing, but maybe don't necessarily need to come back to paradise specifically, let's make sure that our housing policy supports them in finding affordable housing elsewhere. Well, one thing's for sure, things are going to look a lot different in the future. Dr. Karen Chappell, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.